Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. <coughs> After that rather sweeping overview, I'm going to do a little bit of kind of micro detail about Gilgit and Baltistan. Um, let me say, I know this is obvious if you look at me, but I just want to be very clear. I do not speak for the people of Gilgit and Baltistan. Uh, what I do want to do is to try and just raise some questions in your mind because 15 minutes is too short to do justice, but I hope all of you go away and ask some questions about what is happening there. Um, my focus is very much on, on development um, and development in terms of the China-Pakistan economic corridor that is meant to link up uh, China, Xinjiang and China with Guadar on the Arabian Sea. Gilgit Baltistan is central to that project since the main highway, the Karakoram Highway, the main land link between China and Pakistan goes through Gilgit. Um, but it's also home to a major, major um, infrastructure project in terms of building uh, one of the biggest dams in the world uh, to produce electricity. Now the questions I hope at least one of these you take away with you is with development here, this is presented as development. Now, if you were really interested in development of this region, you would presumably want to involve the people in how best to manage that. And as I'll come on to, the people have no real say in what's happening and they do not have political rights. Uh, the next question, if you ever look at infrastructure in terms of road building, you should always be asking, what is this for? Is this about bringing services to the people, or is it about extraction of resources and strategic competition? I would suggest just in the very name, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, it's a corridor. Gilgit Baltistan is a place you use or go through. It is not infrastructure development for the benefit of the area. Another question is going to come up again and again and again. How do we best produce the electricity needed, especially in the developing world, in a time of, of, of increasing climate change? Um, I would ask, and you should also ask if you have an opportunity, solar power becoming cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, easy to do at a micro level, can therefore service small villages without huge infrastructure projects. Instead, what is happening is the building of this, uh, the Diamar Basha Dam, which will <coughs> displace more than 30,000 people once they've, they've produced the reservoir. It will destroy uh, biodiversity, it will destroy cultural heritage, um, and it's not even clear that it's actually going to produce what it needs to produce. Uh, finally, and I guess some of you will know the region, but uh, Gilgit Baltistan is home to some of the largest glaciers in the world. Um, because they're so large, actually, I think they've been melting a little bit more slowly than some of the... There's been a little bit less of a problem than further along the Himalaya, uh, further along to the east. But from what I understand, climate change is beginning to have an impact there now. That will accelerate in very unpredictable ways. So what you'll see is flash floods, more flash floods, landslides, um, both of which make it extremely difficult to, 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 to maintain huge infrastructure projects. Um, and finally, let's not forget this is a, a geological earth unstable region prone to earthquakes. Um, okay, a couple of three points and try and sum up what defines Gilgit Baltistan, its history its lack of political representation, and the strategic importance of the region. Uh, historically, as most of you will know, uh, Gilgit Baltistan was part of the former princely state of Jammu and Kashmir, uh, divided uh, at partition in the first war between India and Pakistan into the Indian side, which is Ladakh, uh, the Kashmir Valley, and Jammu, and on the Pakistan side, Gilgit and Baltistan, and a strip of land known in Pakistan as Azad Kashmir. Ever since, um, since the dispute is essentially frozen, 
uh, Gilgit and Baltistan has been held hostage to the dispute. Uh, so it, it is treated as part of Pakistan for the purposes of exploitation, but it's actually otherwise in a constitutional limbo. It's not even a full province. Um, so um, the people have no real say in what happens to them. <coughs> uh, let's remember that the, um, the decisions are made by the Pakistan military and by China, Chinese state-owned organizations. Um, okay, the other thing I should say is to emphasize, how much time have I got? Six minutes. <laughs> Okay, so the strategic importance of the region. Um, I think just to recognize this is the center of <coughs> a triangle of contestation. So you have India and China, Pakistan and India, and Pakistan and China. The result is that everything that is done there is decided in capitals for strategic reasons and not for the benefit of development. I think I'll stop there. Time. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so final point that actually no, I'll stop. Let me stop and see. Okay, well, we will have some questions. From I feel like I'm rushing, so. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get some questions and then maybe uh, someone has them uh, that you can build, yeah. build upon that. Thank you very much, Mara, talking about Gilead Baltistan. Uh, and, 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 and the human rights of the people.